Welcome to CSR Connect. My name is Anna Semenya. This week I'm talking to Dr. Buitumelo Semetema Kokotlela, the Cluster Executive Manager for NextGen Health, to explain to us and unpack this new cluster. Welcome to CSR Connect. Thank you for having me, Anna. What is NextGen Health? So the Next Generation Health Cluster is a cluster that's set up to be very industry facing. It's a cluster that composed of capabilities in pharmaceutical manufacturing, in molecular diagnostics, precision medicine, as well as health systems and digitization. And these areas that we identified are quite strategic areas for the country. These are areas that we noted that if CSR develops innovative technologies and commercializes these with industry, we can actually shift the needle in the sector. So basically, Next Gen Health Cluster consists of the old biosciences group. It's primarily that, um, including um, work that we're doing in the digital health and health systems. So even though the um, scientists that work in those areas are sitting in other clusters, but that is a thematic area within the cluster. So what is the biggest objective of the Next Gen uh, Health set Cluster? And who are your biggest stakeholders in that cluster? So health is a, is a sector that sits with a myriad of challenges. You know, challenges from infrastructure to access to medicines, but also ensuring that we apply 4 type technologies to improve health service delivery. So we believe that we touch in all um, those areas. And very specific with us within the cluster is to ensure that we've got programs that are directed towards addressing local needs, because those are quite acute. But also as we do so, we want to ensure that we work in cutting edge R&D areas that have a very strong global relevance. And that's what the area of synthetic biology focuses on in precision medicine. And so it is definitely a bulk of what used to be in biosciences in the synthetic biology emerging research area. So what other areas have you, have you also absorbed some of the old areas in the old Miraka group? So we haven't literally absorbed them so that the people sit within the cluster, but there are programs that are then um, positioned within the health cluster. So when I engage with external stakeholders, I talk about the work that um, the next generation enterprises and institution does. I talk about the work that um, the laser center, the photonic center does. And so the intent with these um, clusters is such that although programs may be sitting in different areas, there needs to be a collective and a holistic view of all of these programs because when we offer them as such to stakeholders, it gives CSR a much stronger value proposition than in, in, in bits and pieces. So you've mentioned SMME, so are we still uh, also looking after the BIDC to ensure that we spread it, we still continue supporting SMMEs? Exactly. I mean, that, that, that is a very strong offering, I think, of the division overall that we've got these models that enable us to work with industry. And so we look to leverage on those and actually expand and grow them. So for example, within the medical devices, I mean, what um, MSM previously um, had initiated is a medical devices incubator. And so now we're trying to see how do we then grow that. So SMMEs remain to be critical for us um, in that they're more open to innovative technology and uptake um, of those technologies. But also very important is that there are instruments in the country that support these SMMEs that we as the CSR cannot access. So once we can access those financial instruments, they can then do R&D with CSR. So the whole emergence of SMMEs in, 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 in the sector is a key opportunity for us that we're saying, how do we then further leverage? So who are our current sponsors for these SMME development uh, processes that we've embarked on? So a number of them work with the IDC. Um, we have some that have applied for THRIP um, funding, for SPY funding. And recently we actually had a, a workshop with the PIC. Um, they've set up a fund with the UIF and they're looking for SMMEs um, to invest into. And so they've shortlisted about five of our SMMEs to look at funding them. And that's important for us because these are companies that typically would not be able to access the PIC. So through the MOU that we have with the PIC, we were then able to facilitate those engagements. So we hope to open up more of those types of opportunities. There's also a research center that sits within your cluster. Tell us more about it. So the research center is the Synthetic Biology Center. Um, it was previously the Synthetic Biology Emerging Research Center. And I mean, it's done really well. We have spin-outs um, that have come from 
um, that emerging research area. We have one Persomics located in Boston. We have resin that we still incubate here. Um, and really some cutting edge technologies. I mean, even from a patent portfolio, it's a center that has a very strong family even of, of patents. So the intention going forth, our strategy going forth is that we want to accelerate the commercialization of these technologies and patents, but also strengthen the international partnerships. So as of 1st of June, we are appointed um, as an, the re, a research center manager, Dr. Deepak, and he's come on board, um, comes from Norway, an institution in Norway, and brings, brings a wealth of international partners but also has a commercial experience um, into his role. So the intention is to move it from being an emerging area of science and technology to an, an area that applies cutting edge technologies and commercializes that with biotech companies. So in terms of the whole cluster, what would you say is the biggest challenge? So that's, that's, it's, it's something we, we grapple with every day. When we look at the cluster, a lot of our opportunities for game-changing technologies are international, which then says we need to have scientists and leaders that have a strong international stature so they can command this space. Um, so that's one of the challenge to say, how do we ensure that we focus on deepening international relationships? And that's, that's a key aspect that we are tackling. And on the local front, there's limited funding opportunities, but we're of the view that if we diversify our programs to ensure that we address local needs, which speak a lot to systems, to digitization, to point of care, I think we will be able to then secure the right opportunity. So the challenges we have locally are at a point where we need to look at incremental innovation and relevant solution for the local context, which is not always the case for a global or an international um, contest. Who would be your ideal future stakeholder? So the public sector and the respective government departments remain key. But for me, it's ensuring that we're part of the right industry consortium. Because also as an organization, we work in these different areas and collaborate even with other universities locally, collaborations are very, very key. So what we're driving is to ensure that we are part of, you know, large pharmaceutical consortia that are innovating. Um, part of the synthetic biology consortia. So, I mean, a vision for us within synthetic biology is that we are what we call the next, uh, there's an organization globally called um, EMBO. Um, in the space, it's globally renowned. And our vision is that we want to be the next EMBO. And, and the elements of EMBO that are critical, three elements is globally renowned through its partnership. Industry, they are a go-to synthetic biology institution for industry. We want to be that. But also they are um, a factory for innovative and, and, and cutting edge technologies. And actually when you want the top and the best in this area, that's an institution that you go to. So for us, these, these are the three elements that we want reflected in the cluster in future. So you, over and above Next Gen Health, you're also acting in the advanced agriculture and food uh, cluster. What, tell us more about that uh, cluster. Sure. So this is a cluster that, um, for me, it's one that can have immediate impact in the country um, in addressing the challenge that we have around unemployment, around inequality and poverty. The cluster is, is structured um, such that it also brings in other areas from previously the NRE, so we have Precision Agriculture Communication went out. Um, we also have Enterprise Creation for Development, ECD, that comes from, from the IU. And we have SanBio and then our Agro-Processing Group. And bringing all of these programs together gives us a very strong value proposition in that we're able to span the value chain. We're able to start with um, supporting farmers, supporting commercial and emerging farmers in terms of how to improve their product yields through precision agriculture. So using digital technologies to say, how, when do you cultivate? What's the quality of the soil? What type of yield will, will, will you get? So we're able to do that with the precision agriculture. 
Then what we're able to do with the enterprise creation for development is that they do a lot of feasibility studies, techno-economics, etc. So we're able to work with SMMEs, with farmers around, let's understand the viability of your business, of your offering, prior to us getting to a point where we actually make a product, which we do in agro-processing. And so it fills that value chain, but also very important is Sandbio, which gives us then a regional approach into how we work. So bringing all of these, and, and I think that's the beauty of the new strategy in that it enables us to bring programs where there's alignment, where we can bring more cohesion and actually strengthen the CSR value proposition. Over and above the, the two clusters, you also caretake for the chemicals cluster. Tell us more about their offering. So the chemicals cluster is quite an important cluster also, similar to the others in that it, ad, it, it looks to grow the chemicals industry. The chemicals industry used to be very strong in the country. We have, you know, SASO that came from, 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 from um, South Africa. We have AECI, etc. We have a number of companies, but we're seeing a decline in the chemical sector. And so this cluster is geared towards saying, how do we use innovative technologies to catalyze and to and, and, and to reindustrialize the sector. Can we expect any new co uh, technologies for commercialization in the short term from any of your clusters? Indeed, um, the division sits with technologies that span across the TRL, and we've got and, and we've gone through an exercise where we've mapped all of these and understand these very well to say we've got those that are at the later TRLs where we're driving efforts to commercialize. Very important for us also is leveraging our industry development um, centers that we have to ensure that we push these technologies along. So what we're gonna see from the division is technologies that we immediately are able to commercialize, but also very important to us is continuous innovation. So we will continue to bring in new technologies to integrate uh, with 4IR type technologies. We're gonna see a lot more of that, but also to ensure that there is um, convergence of these technologies because in, in all our clusters for chemicals for example digitization is key in process development when we look at agriculture digitization is key in informing um, product yield etc in health we're seeing also the impact that fire r2 could have so that for us is a very key cross cutter and we haven't always done that and so the the integration and the convergence of these technologies, we see that it's actually going to have a significant shift in how we operate, even our skills profile, the type of um, science, engineering, and technologies that we will bring into this, into this division is going to morph and adapt with the emerging technology trends. Do we have the skills though for digitization? Yes, we do. In the organization, we do have those skills. And our immediate strategy is let's access them where they reside. They're still part of the CSR. But in future, we may have to build some of our own skills and deepen them for our specific sector needs. So uh, under the next gen health uh, cluster, do you see anybody actually moving physically to come and be based in one area? Or are you still, are you just for now, you're just going to leave things as they are? For now, we leave in things as they are. There are some labs that were specifically designed for certain equipment processes. We're not going to move those labs. But areas where it's, it's, it's computer-based type of work and it makes sense for the team to be sitting together, we will indeed try to, to, to accommodate that. Because very important also for me is that teams that work on a similar challenge, on the same challenge, need to be sitting together and thinking together and problem solving together. So ensuring that we create that enabling environment, that, that um, creative thinking space for me is quite important. How, how are you planning on creating a synergy to make sure that all these teams from the different old units actually start working more closely together in the short term before they even uh, start being based in one building? You know, I think in, in this division, we've actually successfully done that. Uh, we've been able to, and, and people have been very receptive um, and people have been very open to working with others. So we, on a weekly basis, have some level of engagement where we're discussing a certain thematic area and we have different skill sets and people coming together. Um, now in June and July, we're busy with our cluster strategies and we have, um, you know, all teams represented. But also very important is the call that went out from the business um, excellence and, and integration um, office where 
um, they've asked us for uh, proposals around strategic initiatives. And we've had to pull people together and say, we're all now in this cluster. This is the big problem that we're solving. Let's articulate it. Let's say what the solutions are, but also let's show how we're all bringing our different skills. So considering how early this is, I think the team has done really, really well. Thank you very much for your time today, Dr. Mokokotela. Thank you. That's it from all of us here on CSR Connect. Thank you for watching.